is Our View, brought to you by the proud members of the Washington Federation of State Employees. The 2010 session of the Washington Legislature is underway, and it will be another round of program slashing unless the members have the courage to close tax loopholes and consider raising revenues. At stake are the very services that average families depend on. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been taken out of state worker pay, benefits, in other areas. But what isn't known as much is that state programs, the uh, basic health plan that is, um, state employees provide services under the basic health plan, that will be cut, it will be eliminated completely in the governor's budget. I mean, the average citizen in the state is not aware of how many times every day they touch state government. From the drinking water that's inspected that they drink, to the roads that uh, are repaired, to the snow plows through the passes, state, state employees provide all of those services and every single one of them is on the chopping block to a certain extent. We are, we are facing a generational issue here, and the quality of life in this state is what we need to look at. And our view is you can't keep cutting and maintain the quality of life. We have to determine a way to raise new revenue to pay for services to preserve that quality. Department of Revenue says that there are 14 billion dollars worth of tax uh, exemptions that are easily accessible. Some of those exemptions um, work to uh, build jobs in that in the state that we want to preserve those. But a lot of those are simply special interest exemptions that we should at a minimum suspend during this budget crisis. I mean, the state workforce is roughly 110,000 workers. 5,000 of those have already been laid off. And those state employees are not just concentrated in Seattle or Spokane or Vancouver. They're in every small city across the state. And they, you know, when they spend their paychecks, they are, there is a multiplier effect in the local community where they are uh, purchasing cars, they are renting properties, they are buying homes, and that money is a stimulus for our current economy. So it is important to, just as we are trying to save every job possible in the private sector, it's important in the, in the public sector as well that we maintain the fabric of our communities across the state. As the nation continues to discuss the need to change our health care system, there was a recent public meeting in Tacoma where the faith community had something to say on this most basic of services. One of my favorite scriptures comes from the book of Micah. What does the Lord require of you? And many of you know what comes next, to seek justice. A few years ago, I was pastoring a church in another community, and the husband who coached Little League and I, I umped the games uh, for him was diagnosed with cancer, and they went through the treatments, and everything was going well, and then he changed jobs, and he had a pre-existing condition, so he could not get health insurance. And so he didn't go to the doctor. He didn't get any treatments. He didn't get any well care. And about a year and a half later, 35-year-old man, three children, started walking slow, started recovering less quickly from his injuries and from his work, and he knew. We went out to coffee one day, and he said, Gordy, there's nothing I can do. If I go to the doctor, my family will end up in bankruptcy. And so... He didn't get the treatment when it was early. And now his children, who are in high school, don't have a dad. And that's because our health care system in our country is broken. It's flawed. 
And we're at a point in our country where we can make a difference and we're called by our Lord to make a difference, to seek justice for everyone. And I'm so glad that the unions are here to have their voices be heard. And I'm so glad that there's school teachers here and that there's uh, workers and that there's laborers and that there are people who believe in this and that there are people who do not believe in it so that we can dialogue, so that we can make a difference. But so importantly, whether we agree with health care reform or we want the system to remain the way it is, that we can hear what our Lord is requiring of us to seek justice. We are one of the very few nations in the world that do not have a health care system for its people. What is wrong with us? I've gone to other countries. I've been lucky enough to sing and speak in other nations, and people ask me about that. They're going, what's with that? And I go, it's profit. We need to get out of the profit. We need to get concerned about people. Our primary responsibility needs to be people. 19 years ago, as I said, I, I ran for US Congress. And at that time, in this town, we had a higher infant mortality rate than many nations in the world. We, we in this town, were ranked, would have been, if we were a nation, would have been ranked 45th in the world community. That's insane. We can do better than that. We need a government that cares about its people, that has its spending priorities correct, that we are able to give everybody the health care they need. That is our responsibility. We have had great issues in this country. We have done better. We can do better. And with all of your help, we must do better and we will do better. Thank you very much. When there's snow and ice on our state highways, our Department of Transportation crews are there to help us. But to provide this dependable service, those crews have the backup of other state employees who keep the equipment operating and make hourly plans according to weather indicators. We're ready to, with our weather services that we subscribe to and the various internet websites, we, we are anticipating that snowstorm and we will have employees coming out in advance of the snowstorm to respond to any conditions that might come up that m during that morning commute. It's our technicians that work for us that make our snow and ice program a success. They're the ones that get the job done, get the equipment ready, and respond to snow and ice problems that might arise. In advance of a snowstorm, we would load our trucks up with either salt and or de-icer, and we would position those trucks in known problem areas along our sections of highway. We are ready 24 hours a day, seven days a week through the winter in the state of Washington. No, there's a lot of stress on everything. When they put the plow on the front, they're pushing, they're hauling weight, they're, um, they're under a lot of stress. Anything small can, can make the truck go down and um, then you lose valuable time. We strive for nothing to happen while the truck is out. And that requires superb maintenance. People should know that we're, we're out there. You know, it's, it's nice to see the one time a year that people actually wave and appreciate the job that we're doing and that's good to know and we'll continue to be out there to keep the roads open. As a driver and user of the state highways, just remember to take it easy going through our work zones. Um, if your car breaks down, we have an incident response program that responds to those situations. Um, just remember that we're out there to keep the driver's safe, the road's open, and we have a job to do. We have families we want to go home to. A look at our union history. Here's Ross Reeder. 
I usually try to present events and people pertinent to the, our state's working class. Again, in January 2010, I'm doing so, perhaps in a slightly different vein, in a more editorial fashion. Born on July 30, 1882, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was elected president in November 1932 to the first of four terms. By March, there were 13 million unemployed and almost every bank was closed. In his first 100 days, he proposed and Congress enacted a sweeping program to bring recovery to business and agriculture, relief to the unemployed and to those in danger of losing farms and homes, and reform, especially through the establishment of the Tennessee Valley Authority. FDR, his great secretary of labor, Francis Perkins, and other political leaders created major labor law reform. Our social security system built and rebuilt major parts of the nation's infrastructure, thus providing living wage work for millions and affirmed the 40 hour work week. Back in the days when I lobbied the state legislature for the AFT and Washington State Labor Council, I worked alongside the famous Norm Scott, who was lobbying for the Washington Federation of State Employees, asked me, Council 28. One day when I was caught by Norm ranting against a particular legislator, well, maybe the old legislature, I can't remember, Norm sat me down and instructed me with his wisdom, Ross, save your judgment for when the record is complete. I immediately saw that his wisdom was truly worth noting. Nevertheless, as someone said of some other politician, you're no JFK, I have to say in what is so far my considered disappointment, we have elected a president during a comparable depression who is no FDR. To those who are even more disappointed than I, I have to say, yeah, but think how much worse it would be with the other guy. So far, the American working class has not received return on its overwhelming support that this administration received at the November polls in 2008. So we have only to keep the pressure on at least until the record is all in. So ignore your disappointment and keep the heat on. This has been Our View, brought to you by the members of the Washington Federation of State Employees, the people who work for you every day. We remind you, when you accept a paycheck for your hard work, you don't give up your rights. Thank you for watching.